this a fun project that I am wanting to start because we have our fun uh, new river house that we are doing things um, to put on the exterior of the house, okay? Because kind of everybody's like at the river. We're in a, a mobile home community and everybody's just added their own personality to the exterior of their place. So that is kind of my goal with a bunch of the things that I have purchased is to just get our personality on the outside. Uh, so I decided we needed a J and a D for uh, Dan and Jen. And um, absolutely, I um, think these are going to turn out great. So I'm going to do these with some texture. And we're going to play with uh, some of my rollers. And I kind of haven't decided which one I want it to do yet because I've limited surface. So you're only going to get like part of a design. Um, so if I did crocodile, you know, I can get like some of the smaller and some of the bigger. Um, if I do the ostrich, that's just going to give me a hammered metal look. And then I also thought I could just do part of the lotus floral. Um, then the other thing was, do I want to make them the same or do I want to make them different? Who knows? I'm trying to figure out because I really don't know. Okay, this is just like one of those things where I'm like, okay, let's get this started because we're going to go back to the river, not this weekend coming up, but the following weekend. So I'd love to have these done so I can hang them up. And um, I thought if I did hammered metal, then they I would probably do them identical. Um, or I figured if I wanted to do Dan and the crocodile, I could do myself in the lotus. And even though they have different patterns, um, I could foil them and color them all the same. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of ways. Okay, here's more credit cards. Perfect. A couple of ways to put on the texture medium and um, try to at least tell you guys a little bit about texture medium and um, how you can use it. Okay, so this was basically a product that we had designed for working with our rollers. And if you look in the bucket, it just is uh, basically white goo, okay? I don't know a better way to describe it, uh, but it has a great texture. Um, and it's fluffy, okay? We kind of like nicknamed it marshmallow cream just because it has a little bit more uh, fluffiness than a lot of other materials have. Um, but it truly is texture medium, okay? But if you ever said, I need some of that marshmallow cream, okay, <laughs> we'll know. Um, we have a little mini trowel, which is wonderful for small surfaces, and it's going to put it on the smoothest. Um, also, we have used like our hotel room keys that make like a little mini tr uh, styrene trowel, okay? And then you also can just use a chip brush. All of these are going to work. All of them are going to get the product on my letter, okay? Um, it just kind of depends on what do you want as far as the background texture. So if I use one of my favorites, okay, which is my trowel, um, I can get this on probably uh, one of the most, I want to say, smoothest applications. And also, I feel like I can control my um, thickness, okay, to be more consistent. Um, not that it really matters if it's perfectly consistent or not, but this will definitely be my tool that I'm going to get my smoothest application, okay. And as far as um, how thick or thin you apply this, I like to have my texture somewhere around um, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch thick. So that's not a lot, not a lot at all, okay. Um, if you don't have a little trowel or you don't want a trowel, <laughs> um, you can always use, like I said, the little styrene. Um, this is just room keys. I travel a lot and I just have always collected my room keys. Um, so you can smooth material out using one of these. It's a little bit, um, it's not going to be as smooth, but you can definitely use it. Okay. And you can move your material around. It's going to also create one of their more smoother applications, but not as smooth as I can get it with my trowel. And then there's always, okay, I'm going to just get the texture medium off the edges while I got my brush in my hand. Um, you can always use 
a brush, okay, a chip brush. Chip brush, though, is going to leave texture because it's going to leave like a strie effect, okay? And that's nothing wrong with that, but that texture will be in your entire finish. So you have to decide if you're okay with, um, okay, I'm dripping here, or almost dripping. Um, if you're okay with that, or if you're not, then you're going to need to use like the um, trowel or the room key, okay? Um, and if you don't travel a lot, there's a lot of companies that tend to send you these fake credit cards trying to help want you to get their loan or whatever. So save those. They make really good little mini trowels, okay? <laughs> um, this is definitely my favorite because it allows you to get on top of the product and to stay the smoothest, okay? I'm just kind of moving it around right now. Um, but because I'm going to do the lotus pattern on here, I think I might go ahead and keep it the striate effect because that is going to create some great interest in the background, even though the pattern, the roller pattern, um, doesn't have uh, a lot of design to it, or I should say I'm not going to get all the design, uh, being that this is thin. Okay, so I'm going to try and get, okay, I've got a little bit of a chunk of something in there. Okay, let's get that out. Okay, I'm going to try to get my lines to be pretty straight okay because I don't want them going all over in every direction and now that I'm doing this I'm thinking oh my gosh how am I going to do this bottom part because I guess I could roll and roll okay so this is going to be interesting <laughs> um, you know sometimes I grab things and think oh this will be easy and then all of a sudden I'm like oh how am I going to do that okay so I'm going to open up my screen a little bigger again um, so that you can see my entire project and my mess I'm making here. And get those out of my way. So I'm going to be able to get the full design almost at the top. So I'm going to aim right down. Okay, let's try to aim right down the middle with this, okay? And you, I am just playing around. If I don't like it, I can wipe it out, okay? So I'm going to try to get the design up. See, I'm sliding too, okay? Yeah, we're sliding too much. Okay, let's fix that. If you get a slide, sometimes that's just because the product is still really wet and it's nice to let it kind of sit up a little bit. But look how easy, if I don't like something, um, I can wipe it out and do it again, okay? That's how easy it is to work with the texture. Um, don't feel like you're like stuck with anything. You can wipe it out and do it again. Now, because I got a little bit of a slide, let me show you guys how I deal with that, okay? So I'm gonna use my other hand, which I'm using my right hand to roll or to hold the handle. I'm gonna use my left hand to ensure that my pattern is going to roll. Now, the one thing that I'm also noticing is I think my wood's not straight. There's a low spot right here because the design did not take there. So I think I'm going to get my texture on a little heavier so that hopefully the roller um, will be able to make its impression, okay? Um, and that's the other thing is if your surface isn't perfectly flat and even, you could get something like that, okay? Um, and being on... A smaller substrate than the roller um, it does sometimes cause a little trickiness okay so I'm gonna try this one more time I'm gonna try to push a little harder with the roller to maybe that it will grab that pattern oh there that's better okay so I got it thicker there and I pushed a little harder and I'm still using my other hand to roll okay to help roll and we're gonna see <laughs> if I can do this okay this is getting tricky because I'm gonna try to roll well, it's not gonna come out perfect by any means but I was gonna try and see if I could get the design to come up okay 
Well, that's not too bad. This is about the only spot that didn't come out great. Um, can you guys see that well? Okay. Um, let me get back that way. Okay, let me get these. I got stuff in my way to push this too far. Um, so there's only like one spot here that didn't come out perfect, but I'm going to show you guys some ways to fix this. Uh, let me grab some of my tools. Uh, this is like one of my favorite tools. It's called a wipeout tool. And I know that you can get them in the um, department for clay, okay? So I'm going to brush out the section that I don't like. And I'm trying to keep that strie going in the right direction, okay? And then what I'm going to do is use this tool and try to carve out the pattern. So when all else fails, okay, um, let's see, I'm trying to see what's where the design is, okay? When all else fails, don't feel like you're lost, okay? <laughs> you can always fake a design. Um, let's see, that goes that way, and then there is some leaves that go this way and that way. So it's not gonna be perfect, but I think I can definitely improvise. Because Nobody knows exactly how that pattern is supposed to go, okay? And I think there's just a little... Okay. Now I've got some high areas from where I've done that. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in right where I'm at so that you guys can see, okay? So I created a little bit of a high area where I've basically drew the pattern in and my um, wipeout tool went deeper than the roller did, but it's okay because I'm going to sand everything when it dries and you're never going to see all that depth because I'm going to end up sanding it, I'm going to paint it, I'm going to foil it, I'm going to glaze it, I'm going to do all kinds of things. Um, but that helps connect, okay? I know the pattern is probably not perfect, but you and me might be the only ones that actually know that, okay? Um, but that is how I do it. So anytime I run into that kind of a situation, that is the kind of stuff I do, okay? Uh, and like down here, it kind of got missed. Um, perfect. Okay, so it's just... A simple way it's a called the wipeout tool clay department you guys um, now here I'm gonna open my screen back okay I'm too zoomed in there okay anywhere where I have the product on the edge if I just take the time now to kind of remove that it's just less sanding I have to do later so I'll have a tendency to go ahead and do that now oh there's the other part okay I need to Double it up here and let's flip it, okay? Add a little bit of pattern up there. Okay, now it's now it's done. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So if you can at least grab the product off the edges um, and clean that up with your fingers, it's just less sanding, okay? And I'm not one who loves sanding, so I try to get all that cleaned up before it dries. Now I'm going to have to sand the top because there's going to be a lot of rough edges on the top edge. Uh, so when that dries, I'll definitely sand that down. Okay, now I've got dirty fingers because I've been playing in texture medium. But let's clean off my hand. Um, as far as dry time, um, I'll just let this dry overnight. Uh, if you were in a hurry, probably a couple hours, just depending on how cold or warm it is in your environment. Um, and I'm going to go put this aside. Gosh, that came out darn cute. Um, I'm glad I chose that roller for my, for my J, okay? And let's get out the D for Danny and figure out how we're going to do that. So where's my big D? Okay, here it is. 
my big D. Yep, yeah, he is. My he is my big D. He is my big Danny. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of figure out what I'm gonna do here because we're gonna have multiple directions. Okay, so I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna go this way here and then try to possibly go around like I did the other one. Okay. Um yeah. <laughs> or I can go down like that and I could go like that. That might be easier, okay? And all the textures just, yes. I think I'm gonna do that, okay? Because that'll almost do the whole thing if I slide over. So I'm trying to just gauge, okay, where I can kind of get the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna make a little mark. Uh, I don't wanna use a Sharpie. Oh heck, who cares? Okay, so that's kind of like my point of where I'm going to start because even though I'm going to miss a little bit there, I can always come back and fill that in, but that's going to let me do a pass here, make it down that section, and I can do a pass over here, and I should be able to get the whole rest of the D and not have any places to fill in other than maybe the end over there. So instead of just winging it, okay, I was, start, I was trying to really think that one out before I start. Most of the time I just start stuff and then try to figure it out later. Um, again, uh, this one here, I'm probably going to go ahead and trowel on, okay? And this is another way that I will at least position the material onto the surface, and then I can trowel it smooth. Um, the texture medium also has some pretty good working time. And when I say working time, that just means how much time you have to play with it before it's going to start drying on you um, to where you can't move it around, okay? Now, I had texture medium on here and I let it dry on the trowel, so it's definitely giving me some lines that I'm not happy with, but that means I just needed to clean my trowel off. Okay, let's see if I can get that to work. Okay, there we go. So... Because this pattern is a little tighter um, in the design element, I'm going to do this with, um, I'm going to put it on with my trowel and not the brush because I don't want that striate effect in the texture. So I'm going to try and get this to where I have about an eighth of an inch thickness. Um, depending on what's your surface. So let's say if I'm working on a piece of furniture and I'm working on a tabletop or the top of a dresser, I'm normally trying to keep my texture about the 1 16th of an inch because that way I can kind of control the depth and not get something too thick. Um, and also once I'm done, I can sand that pretty smooth. Um, and still have a nice smooth surface for people to put stuff on okay so when I did my coffee table that I have at home I tried to keep the texture right at that one um, one sixteenth of an inch here I can go a little thicker this is just a fun craft project okay uh, and it doesn't have to be perfect okay so let's just try to get rid of some of this excess I got it too thick in some spots Cleaning off my sides a little bit here and there, okay? So who has the crocodile roller, okay? I know there's got to be some of you out there that already have this. Okay, so I'm going to stand up because sometimes standing up just gives you a better angle at being able to uh, attack your product projects, okay? So again... I'm using my non-rolling hand, okay, to make sure that I'm rolling well and it doesn't slip because when you're not on a 100% flat surface and I'm on a couple of inches, um, the rollers can definitely slide on you and using your other hand to keep them from sliding is just one of the techniques that I use. Okay, so here you can either line right up to it or you can overlap a little bit. I'm just making sure that 
I hopefully have this position that I can go straight down and get the rest of the D. Oh, that's turning out so cool, okay. Yeah, it looked like it missed a little bit here, so I'm just gonna roll again through that. Okay, here I'm just going to match up. So when you have a tiny little place like this to do, it's better to use the end on the handle instead of the end like this because it's gonna go back and forth too much. This kind of gives you a little bit more control. And let's finish out that section. Woo! How fun is that going to be, okay? So now I've made a mess. <laughs> I got more cleanup tonight. I want to know where the cleanup fairies are, okay? So this excess stuff, okay, that's on the edges, just clean it off. Or if you want, you can just let it dry and sand it off later, okay? Uh, I'm just going to try to smooth all of it out now and get rid of it. And I'm telling you, I don't care how how neat I try to be. I always get it on the edges. Okay, so I think I think that that's pretty good. So here is the D, okay? Isn't that really cool? That is such great, great texture. And this is going to be fun. They're going to coordinate together, um, but the different textures I think will be fun. You know, the uh, the J is going to be a little bit more girly for me, and this is going to be a little bit more masculine for Dan. Okay, so there's a couple spots that, because I was on that weird angle, that it didn't go through completely. So I'm just going to go ahead and carve a few of those. I mean, and you can do this or you, you don't have to, okay? I mean, it really is just a personal preference. When the whole thing is said and done, you don't notice all these little things that you might notice right now, okay? My hand's getting dirtier and dirtier because I keep putting it in <laughs> and the texture that I even put all over the paper. So you can clean up with soap and water, okay? Um, and actually, I'm just using water on my hands. This is a water-based product. It is definitely going to come off with water. Um, it comes off very easily. Um, it comes off with water on the rollers themselves as well. So the best way to clean your rollers, because we try to be environmentally safe around here, is um, we have scrub brushes similar to this. This is our little nail scrub brush back at the sink, but we have a bucket of water back there, a five gallon bucket, and we scrub off all the texture in the bucket. So when that settles, it goes to the bottom of the bucket. We can pour off the water and then scoop out any material that's at the bottom and let that dry and dispose of it. We do not go down our sink with these, okay? Um, so we don't want to get all this texture in the sink, but scrub, you just scrub back and forth in a bucket of water. It's all going to clean out very, very easy. Okay. Again, you want to let this dry for, um, several hours. Okay. Until it's thoroughly dry. This is texture medium that I'm working on. If somebody didn't answer that, um, and it's my own brand. It's called Artsyville Embellishments Texture Medium. Okay. It's wonderful to work with. Not only can you do stuff like this with the roller, but you can also um, trowel it through a stencil. It works beautifully. Um, you can just create texture with it. We have an artist friend who does a lot of her canvases with this because she loves the way the texture moves. Um, so I'm going to go put this over so it can dry. Let me go find a safe place. I'm going to go ahead and just get this out of my way. So all these tools, um, what we basically do to start with is wipe anything off on paper, uh, napkins, paper towels, you know, whatever. Try to get as much product off as possible and then we clean it in that bucket, okay? And I'm gonna go stick this by my hammer so I remember to put that lid on. I'm so good about forgetting to put the lids on. And let's see if we can move this out of the way. Okay, that's my cleaning pile for later. Okay, so who wants to come clean all my, my um, stuff for me, okay? I got a pile for you. 
I'm going to try to put this on an annoying place so I can't leave and forget about that. So we have been back here for a few nights in a row doing some fun stuff and um, we're just going to continue. I started on, ooh, I can see that my sanding job wasn't perfect, okay? Took these out there a little while ago and it's getting a little... A little dark okay and I can see my sanding job was not perfect okay so I'm gonna got some really rough sandpaper so hopefully I can get that off of there quick okay um, I guess I should make sure I sand um, in better light do you guys find that you do that sometimes you bring something in because I don't like sanding in the studio because it just makes a mess so I try to do all that heavy sanding outside um, but our lighting was not nearly as good. Oh my gosh. So I wanted to know, we did this last night. Let me know if you're preferring this view, okay? Because I kind of change things around. I don't always use this camera during my lives, but I thought it would be kind of cool for you to have more of a direct view of what I'm working on instead of a slight angle, okay? So let me know, let me know how you guys like this view, okay? That is a wonderful collection of rollers. Um, in there, I think it's crocodile, ostrich, zebra, uh, cheetah, and tiger maybe? But yeah, I think, it, I think that's what it is. But that is a great collection of rollers. You can use those for so many projects. And the rollers, I mean, they're great for doing my fun projects like this. They're wonderful on furniture. They're great on walls. I mean, they can be used for a lot of stuff, okay? So I'm gonna do my whole J black, okay? Um, not exactly sure which foil I'm using yet, but I want the J and the D to coordinate even though they have different roller patterns on them. I want them to complement each other because these are going to be hung up together on the outside of our river place. I think I was telling you guys that um, our little community where we have um, a mobile home on the river, it's not on the river, it's in the community, okay, but you have to walk to the river, which nobody walks, they all have their golf carts. Um, I think I'm getting lazy around there, okay? I was like, I think I need to walk to the river more than I need to drive to the river. <laughs> Um, but everybody, um, has like personalized the outside of their home with decorations. Okay. And we have, I think the only thing that I had on the outside of the place was a, uh, a thankful for, um, Thanksgiving. Okay. I hung something right by the front door and that was it. Oh, and I took all my pumpkins because we spent Thanksgiving there. So I took all my pumpkins as well. Uh, but these are going to actually get attached to the outside of the house. Um, or my, my personality, I shouldn't say Dan's personality. My personality is going to be shown, okay? All kinds of fun things. Um, but he at least agreed. He agreed that we our house looked really boring. We had nothing on the outside of it. So, um, so what I'm doing, as a lot of you know, um, this is... My base coat that I'm using, which is Bondego, and Bondego happens to be a paint and primer all-in-one. It has fabulous adhesion, will stick to just about any surface. Um, the only time I will put a different primer down first is if I'm working on plastic, um, I just feel I need that extra bond, so I will go the extra mile with plastic projects and put down what's called XIM bonding primer first, okay? Um, and that's because plastic can give you a little hiccup when you are doing foils, okay? So you, if you're gonna do a foil finish over a plastic or acrylic, you might wanna put your XIM bonding primer down or at least the Bondego so that you have some good adhesion, okay? Because I'm gonna explain what happens. Um, and hopefully this will make sense. The foils are a metallization. 
Okay, I'm just fluffing this, okay, making sure I don't have any petals of black sitting anywhere. Um, the foils are a metallization that are attached, and I really don't know exactly the process, to a clear or a frosted carrier. That carrier is basically um, plastic, almost feels like cellophane that you would wrap presents in, okay? And it takes a really, really, okay, I gotta go find a place for this, so give me just a second. It takes a super, super sticky adhesive to pull that metallization off of the carrier. So I want to give you guys a visual right now. Okay, so what I'm talking about, okay, is this is the pretty pattern that you see, but that side, the side that you see, the pretty pattern, that's actually the plastic carrier. The back side has the metallization on it. And it takes a really, really, really super sticky uh, adhesive to pull that off. So if your adhesive is not sticking to the substrate, whatever you put it on, okay, whether it be a piece of wood, a piece of plastic, whatever the project is, if the foil adhesive is not adhering really well to that surface and you put this on the top of it and you're trying to pull that metallization off the back, if the weakest point is going to give, if the foil adhesive is weak and not bonded to the surface, it's going to give before the foil will give. So I hope that makes sense to you on why we need such a super sticky carrier or foil adhesive and why you need really good prep. Because once you put lay this on and you pull it, you want all of that beautiful foil to adhere and stay on that surface. Um, and like I said, it's on here good. Okay, some, some of the foils release way easier than others. Some give you a little bit of a hiccup here and there. Um, but all in all, you just have to make sure that uh, the, the better prep you have on your surface, the more time you allow everything to dry, the better your foil transfer will be. So I'm talking about foils because definitely <laughs> these are going to get foil, okay? And then I'm going to cover them with, uh, top coat them with an exterior rated varnish, okay, to protect. Um, because foils are not light fast. Some of them will do better in the environments than others. But you want to make sure that if you're going to do something for exterior, that you are protecting it uh, as much as you can. And that's with anything you throw outside. Most of the time, I try to buy things at um, Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree because they're so much more accessible um, instead of using um, some of our cutters because then uh, you can't get that surface everywhere. Um, but what I was telling everybody last night, we have a bunch of ornaments, okay? So I have, I think, three different shapes of ornaments. This one's probably about 12 inches, I want to say. Once you put the little top thing on it, it's probably maybe 15 inches or so. Um, but I've got a few of those left over. So if anybody is interested, um, I think that we had figured out they were $12 a piece. If you're interested, let me know and just message me here, okay? And um, we can get those in your hands because I don't think I'm going to get any more done than the three that I'm working on. I, um, I overestimated my time <laughs> as always, okay? I, I either think there's more hours on the day or I think I get more done during the day. I don't know, but um, I'm going to work all weekend and just try to get some things caught up because we've got a lot of stuff going. And if you're not familiar, uh, my painting group is a private group where I teach a lot of finishes and I teach finishes, I teach two finishes every month. And also um, I do some product training 
um, some fizz training. Sometimes we just have Q and A, and that way I can answer different questions from members of the group. Um, but it's a great group, and um, it's going to open again in uh, February. So if you're interested in getting on the wait list, so you're the first to know when it opens. Um, I think just type in painting group and the link should be sent to you. And if not, I will send you the link so you can go get on the wait list. Okay, I think I got my big D done. I'm so excited, okay? Hello, Crystal. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Crystal is definitely needs to go on payroll because she is one who helps me create a lot of files so I can cut stuff on my cameo okay so we had a little conversation today so I did the lotus roller through my texture medium I did the crocodile roller through the texture medium painted everything with the black bondego I even made sure I kind of critiqued my edges because they weren't that great at first um, and then I got my foil adhesive on um, the D so far but I'm gonna put this aside because um, I want to get my J ready to go here. So I thought we'd talk about that. Um, oh, Susan says she's putting a top coat on several of her projects. Um, yes, Terry, I used my rollers. <laughs> I do use my rollers. I don't use them all the time, but I love to use my rollers. Okay, because I just think it just creates so much great interest and um, you just get a lot of fun texture and pattern as I grab a brush way, 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 okay? Um, so here's my sticky plate, and here is my gallon of foil adhesive, so you can see in there it looks milky white. And I'm just going to pull some of that out and put it onto my plate. Um, just want to make sure I've got enough of it. And then this is so... Um, I never want to contaminate this bucket, so I'm always using a clean brush, pulling it out, and then I can add water to it. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if my brush is then touching other surfaces. I'm not contaminating the whole bucket, and you never want to put the water in the entire bucket because it could go funky on you, okay? Um, so when I brush my foil adhesive, um, I love, okay, that's going to be a sticky spot right there. <laughs> I love to water it down a little bit, and it's only like 1%, 2%, so don't think I'm watering it down a ton. Um, I just like to water it down a little bit because it helps it to brush so much smoother, okay? As I was saying, take your foil adhesive out of, out of your container, put it onto a plate, and if you're going to brush, add a little bit of water. So I like using my spritzer. Okay, this is just a really fine spray bottle. And I just lightly mist onto the plate, mix my water in, and then when I go to brush, it's just a little easier, okay? Because our foil adhesive, adhesive is super thick and super tacky when it dries. Um, it's white, milky white when it goes on. So as you're brushing it on, it should be changing the color, okay? And the darker the surface that you are working on, you, it's so much easier to see. If you're working on white, I don't think you ever see it, okay, other than it might change the sheen of the project you're working on. But if you're one of my regular customers and followers, you guys don't work on white, do you? <laughs> I think I've preached that enough that you should always have a color, a color, not white, underneath your foils, okay? So brush it on. And try to brush it on to where you're not creating all kinds. I mean, if I cross hatch it and just kind of get it on haphazardly right now, that's okay. But come back and smooth it out because if you leave all of those uh, application marks, they could telegraph through your foils, okay? So I do have some texture going on here. I applied the texture medium with a chip brush. So that kind of gave me a strie effect to begin with. And then I rolled through with the lotus roller. So I've got a pattern on here. Um, and I don't want to take away from any of that. So I want to try and smooth out my brush strokes as much as I can. 
Okay, so if I see a place where I just feel like my foil adhesive is really light, I can always go back and brush on a little bit more. You can come back and just even do a real light um, brushing over the top and kind of smooth out any brush strokes. And then I'm just going to put my brush in my tub for now, okay? So I'm going to back up here just a second. Uh, my foil adhesive is on my big, beautiful J here. Okay, I'm going to open my screen a little bit more. Uh, so this time you get to see me again. Um, and it's milky white. And it's going to look milky white for probably 20 to 30 minutes. But even though it starts to look clear like the D does, let it sit for an hour or two, okay? Especially during the winter, the colder, damper weather. Just doesn't let things like dry and cure as fast as it does during the summer. Um, if you're really, really in a damp area, even put an oscillating fan in the room. Don't put a fan directly on your project, but just have a fan in the room so air is moving. Circulating air keeps things drier. Um, just a little hint, okay? Um, we keep our ceiling fans going almost all year long just for that purpose, because uh, living close to the beach, it's kind of damp. <laughs> Um, so take your project and go put it someplace safe until that foil adhesive dries to a nice firm hard tack and then you'll be ready to actually do your foiling. So my big D here, and don't you love that crocodile pattern? I don't care what you do the crocodile on, it looks awesome no matter what. Um, so I've decided that I think we are going to use one of the newer foils, Nevada Sun, on the D. Okay, so I'm going to foil um, this D with the Nevada Sun. And the Nevada Sun is one of our newer um, foils. And this one is a V mask foil, so it's a super easy release. And it curls, okay? <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to do some foiling by yourself. Sometimes it's nice to have a friend because see how it just keeps curling back and curling back and curling back, okay? Um, it's going to always give me a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to cut a piece here. And then I'm going to show you one of my techniques okay, to try and keep this flat. So <laughs> it's not cooperating at all. Okay, <laughs> We're going to fold it in half with the pretty side going inside. Okay, And that way... I can hold on to it lengthwise and jump the wrong way there. Okay, let me grab that again. Um, and that way I can hold on to it straight and it doesn't curl back on me. Okay, um, you do not want to crinkle this foil. Um, any of the V masks, please don't crinkle them first because they're a super easy release and it's like all the metalization is probably going to fall off. Okay, so let me get my D back over here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this over the edge. I'm going to smooth it out, okay? And then that way I can kind of grab it and bring it as far as it will go. Now, it's not going to finish out this part, but ew, I got a big section in here I can reuse, okay? So that's what I think I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, you can always start off just by uh, rubbing, okay, because you you don't always want or need 100% coverage, so it's kind of a personal preference. So with just rubbing and all the texture I got going here, I'm not getting a super great release, okay. Let me lift that up, okay, because I'm just rubbing and it's just kind of like catching the high areas here randomly. So what I'm going to do is smooth it out on everything just to get it in position. I'm going to put that back down and then we're going to get out my scrub brush. But again, I want some of my black to show, so I'm not going to scrub super, super hard um, until I decide how much I want to release or not release, okay? And if I have an area because it's super textured, okay? I might have to get in there and scrub even harder, especially where it's the real, real small um, area of the crocodile roller, because it gets really busy in those areas, um, and foils like a smooth surface. Oh, 
That's going to be so pretty, though. So I can come back, and I can kind of critique where I want to leave black, okay, or maybe if I want to bring in a little bit more color from the foil. Um, so always kind of peek as you're going. And that way it's going to fall right back into place. And so I'm just letting you guys know, okay, where the pattern is super busy and it has the really small little uh, design to it, um, the foil doesn't want to get down in there. So you do have to get a little bit more aggressive and scrub it down into those areas, okay? So where over the big area of the crocodile pattern, it releases super well, okay? So I picked out Nevada Sun for the D, but I have no idea what I want to do on the J yet, okay? But I thought, okay, I'll start here because I really love this foil, and I thought this would be gorgeous on there, and it is, okay? Um, it just has a, a beautiful um, variegated color that goes from golds to some bronze, so it's not a solid color, okay? Um, and I figured no matter what color the outside of the house was, this would go beautifully. Um, so I'm going to try to see if there's enough, or if this is wide enough, okay, to catch this last, oops, went too far, okay, there we go. Just coming back and doing the other part of the G that didn't get covered because the foil wasn't wide enough. Oop, so pretty. So it's personal preference. When you've got a dark base coat like this, um, how much of the black you want to show or not show, okay? I love the contrast of the black. And then um, if I want to bring even the crocodile pattern back a little bit more, I want to say pronounced, um, I can go ahead and glaze over everything with a, a black glaze or even a dark umber glaze and just let the glaze kind of sit down into all the recessed areas and bring the, um, the pattern back if I've lost it anywhere. Uh, but isn't that gorgeous? That is such a pretty color. So if you haven't checked out Nevada Sun, um, you might want to check this one out. I'm going to get it up here a little bit closer so that you guys can really, really see and move it around. See how that color is so variegated, okay? That's what I love about a lot of the... Um, the bee mask foils, they're not solid, okay? So it's subtle, um, but it's like brushed in multiple colors. Okay, so we've got that one done so far. Um, and then I just have to decide. I have, not really, but the J is not going to be ready tonight, so I'm safe, okay? But um, i got to figure out what other foil do I want to put with this one? Because mine is a floral pattern, okay? i got lotus flower on my J. Um, so I got to figure out what I want to coordinate with this one and if I want to stay in the golds and the bronze or if I want to just have a major contrast <laughs> and um, do something different. Who knows? I really want to do animal print but I was trying to withhold from, from doing that. <laughs> we'll see. They already have these holes notched in the back. Okay. So I'm just going to put two nails and just hang it right right on those nails and it should be fine um, so yeah they're just gonna hang on hang on to the house yeah it is a mobile home it is just siding <laughs> so it will be fine uh, let's see if I missed anything else but don't you guys love 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 this um, new foil um, Kim the letters came from Hobby Lobby but it's been a while since I bought them but they normally always have some big wooden letters. Um, they even have metal letters, and those would be fine to also use, okay? What I plan on doing tonight is a couple of different projects that I have started. And uh, I think you guys can see this pretty well. Okay, so I have the, the D that's completed for Dan. 
and I'm wanting to figure out what color I want to do my J. So, you know, I thought about it could be boring, and I could do them both <laughs> in the Nevada sun, okay, because it's gorgeous, and then they would coordinate color-wise, even though they don't color coordinate pattern-wise. Um, for some of you that have possibly missed, here's my J. It's ready to go. Um, it's has the lotus pattern, it's painted, it's foil, it has foil adhesive, it's just ready for its next layer. And this is a beautiful one. This is like the very first animal print foil that I had in my collection. So I absolutely love this one. And now there's so many options, you sometimes forget about your first. <laughs> But I think I'm kind of leaning towards Desiree also. I think I might go for the Cheetalicious on the bulletin board. I like that pop of extra color. You know what I do. Okay, so girls, if you want to know, when I go shopping for foil, I go into my office. And we have all of, almost all the foils like cut into the little squares because we do our little... Um, freebies that we send in every box that gives you a couple of little samples of squares um, and then we have all of them in drawers okay so I just start opening the drawers and kind of going shopping it's kind of crazy um, but it is really super fun to um, be able to have all of that to your access okay so I'm going to put this over my J okay and I cut a big, big piece so I could just do it all at once. So this is about, I'm going to say it's about two feet or close to it, okay? And I'm just going to rub it into place and get it going. Oh, I think this is going to be so, so pretty. These are going to be fun. First, with rubbing, did not transfer enough okay so i'm going to do a light rub with my brush and determine how much i want oh that is going to be super fun so i want the black to show so i don't want to go too crazy um i want to zoom in you guys and that way you can see this project a little bit closer when i'm lifting and peeking Ooh, how fun Okay, so now it's a matter of how much black do I want it to leave. And I'm kind of testing this one area until I determine how much. So I'm still not getting full coverage in the design element. And almost everywhere where the pattern is carved, it's not transferring at all, okay? Because I'm not pushing that hard. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit more pressure. And this is so cool because if you have something that has um, different levels, like, you know, I have the, des the design part that's up, the carved part that's lower. So you have different levels of your surface. You can kind of control how much coverage you really do transfer. Oh, how fun, how fun, how fun. I hope you guys can see that. Well, I'm going to lift it up. Um, oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. And I'm thinking that's about, well, you know, because this pattern has a lot of black, there's a lot of black. Okay. So I might even go a little bit more and let it go into some of the recessed areas. So like with... The Nevada Sun, because there was no black in the foil itself, the only black is just in the low areas of the design. Here, this pattern has a lot of black in it because of the leopard pattern that I might scrub harder than I thought I was going to and let it go into some of the lower areas. But I think these are going to be super, super cool together. Okay, so as I pull up, I can always check my foil transfer to know how much is going in those low areas or not. And you just scrub a little harder. And believe me, 
it will eventually get down there. Because it's always going to grab the high before it goes into the low. I'm just critiquing. It's just kind of like when I stencil, okay? I lift and look, kind of got maybe a little bit more there. I'm pull it back up and go, maybe a little bit more here. Um, so it's just kind of fun because you can control. Um, and that's why I continue to keep the foil in position, okay? And not just rip it all off because I want it to be right where the pattern is. So if I want to add more color, it's still going to be on the foil in that spot. Yes, I'm a peeker. I'm a peeker, girls. But this is how I stencil, too. Okay, so maybe that's why my love of foil is so great, because it's kind of like stenciling for me with color. Okay, I think I'm going to rip it off. But you can see how much of it is actually left on the carrier, okay? Um, so there's still a lot of the outline, which is really cool. Okay, I'm going to open everything back up here so that you guys have a bigger view. Doing that left-handed, it wasn't that gracious, but let's see how these look together now. Oh, I think those are awesome. That is going to be fun. And <laughs> everybody's going to know, yep, that's that's Jen, her and her J with her leopard, okay? So that looks great together. So it kind of just depends on how conservative or how loud you want to be, okay? But this is going to go on the outside of our house. I'm thrilled. So now I just need to protect these, okay? They are basically done. I'm going to throw an exterior varnish over the top because, like I said, these are going to the desert. Um... Our place is down um, by like Havasu and uh, it's really really hot and a lot of sun okay for most of the year so these are gonna get highly protected with an exterior varnish with UV protection okay um, ew, I really like that nice choice okay 